GPS. GPS handout there. The handout took us oh, like six months to put together. I don't know if you ever tried researching GPS, but there's not really like one source that has it all together. So this was like three different seminars that both of us went to. We read every book we could find and finally got a compilation of trying to explain GPS in simple terms. Okay. So we're just pretty much going to follow this. We tried to put it in a logical order. So we're going to try to follow, follow this as we explain it. All right, so GPS consists of 32 satellites. Are they in orbit? Because on one of my uh, EVSC classes online, they were saying there's 27 in orbit. And so I don't know if that's old information. There are 32 in orbit, actually 31 because one came down. Okay. There are 32 in orbit, but, so there's 32 satellites, there's only 24 positions. Okay. What that is, is they've got satellites, when they put them up there, they're only supposed to last 20 years. Some of them are lasting almost 30 years. So they've got the replacement satellite up there waiting to take over it to the place of the one when it dies. So we've got some extras up there waiting. Now, when they did that, you can't obviously put them right next to each other or they hit each other. And so they had, a, had to put them you know, apart by a little bit. When they did that, it actually added just enough randomness to the positions that it actually improved the accuracy of GPS or the reliability um, to the point that we will always see more than 24 up there. So that was kind of a, an unintended consequence, a good consequence that they got from that. Okay, so 32 satellites, 24 positions, six orbital planes, so you've got your Earth. And so they're just like a big old atom, there's like all these orbital planes that go around the Earth, six of them. Okay, so there's four satellites in each orbital plane. Satellites orbit the Earth every 12 hours. Okay, so that means if I look up right now and I can see a satellite, I'm going to see that same satellite 12 hours from now, right above it. It's fine. Okay, that is what makes GPS reliable. The 12-hour orbit is what makes GPS reliable. Okay. With the 24 <coughs> positions in the six orbits. That assures reception of at least five satellites anywhere on Earth, unless you're in a slot canyon. Each satellite has a name. That name is a number. So when you pull up your GPS screen and it shows you like your signal strength, it'll say like 5, 10, 14, 6, 22. That is the actual name of the satellite. So that's why they're random like that. Each satellite has an atomic clock on board. What's an atomic clock? Very accurate. <laughs> How accurate? A billionth of a second, a nanosecond. Why is that important? That's what makes it accurate. That's what makes it accurate. But why? Why a billionth? What's significant about a billionth of a second? Oh, yeah, the speed of light travels. Ah, the speed of light. Light travels this far in a billionth of a second. How far is that? One foot. One foot. We're trying to measure our position within feet. So we have to calculate the speed of light within feet. Whoever figured that out, whatever, that's their job. Okay? So they have an atomic clock on board, each one of them. Okay? So we'll start our drawing here. Just got my Earth, got my satellites up here in orbit. Got my airplane. On board my airplane, I have a GPS receiver, transmitter? Receiver. Receiver. A receiver only, okay? Transmits no information. The GPS receiver already knows the orbits of the satellites. It knows that satellite number six orbits this direction. It knows where each satellite should be orbiting. It's called the, uh, what do they call it? The GPS almanac, okay? So, I've got six, ten, why did none of my markers work? Let me stop blending them out. Six, ten, fourteen, twenty-two, thirty. Okay. So we've got these satellites up here. So each satellite 
sends out to my airplane three pieces of information. First thing it sends out is its ID. Hey, I'm satellite number six. Okay, now I know where, I know satellite number six orbits in this plane. Here's my position. It's called ephemeris data. The ephemeris data is the orbital position. And then it sends out a time code. So here, here's who I am, here's where I'm at, here's my time code. All the clocks on the satellites obviously are synchronized. Okay. So by receiving that, it then plots out, if you were to draw it out I guess, just like in math class. Okay, well I know that satellite number 6 is here because that's where it told me it is. Satellite 22 is over here, 14 is here, 10 is here and 30s over here. Then it takes the time codes. Well, all those time codes can only intersect at one spot because they were all, I received them all at the same time, so the difference between them tells me how far I am from each one of those satellites. So then basically, if you want to look at it simply, then it starts plotting where I'm at. Oh, looks like I must be right here. That's where they all intersect, okay? Only three satellites are necessary for two-dimensional position. That's like DME. So if you're just a hiker with your handheld GPS, you only need three satellites to actually get your position. I need four satellites for my three-dimensional position. So now if you're a hiker and you want to know your elevation, you've got to have at least four satellites on your receiver to give you that data. I need five satellites, though, for rain. What's rain? Receiver Autonomous Integrity Monitoring. What does autonomous mean? Autonomous, automatic self <coughs> So the receiver automatically monitors the integrity of the satellite's position and signal. Okay? So RAIN has those two functions, position and signal. Okay, so the first one on the position. If I had my airplane and I had three satellites right above me, if we draw out these time code circles, technically there's kind of a margin of error of where you might be. So this satellite, if I was to draw a circle, I'm only going to draw part of the circle. This satellite says that, hey, you know what, I'm somewhere in here. Well, this one says, I'm somewhere in here. And this one says that you're somewhere in here. So we've narrowed down the space quite a bit. Okay? But RAIN, part of it is it looks for what we call a horizon satellite, a satellite that's below 45 degrees. Because this satellite down here, below 45 degrees, says that you're somewhere here. Okay? It eliminates a huge lateral error. So if you don't have this side satellite, your position is not accurate enough to be considered rain or integrity. The integrity of your position is not accurate enough. So that's the first thing, is it checks your actual position, so your position of the satellite. You drew it with three. Does it, it needs five, though, right? Just double check. Correct. Okay. I was just illustrating that I could have okay. tons up here, and it still wouldn't change the fact that this, this side margin would still be there. Okay. So that's what we're getting at. Yes, you are correct, though. So that's the rain, that's the position function. So the next function, though, is the signal, which is I need a minimum of four to determine my three dimensional position. The fifth one simply verifies that all five agree. So that's all it's checking for. Now, if rain finds a bogus satellite, though, so I find out that uh, satellite number 10 is just way off. I left one out here. So satellite number 10 is sending out this time signal. It's like, well, that doesn't match anything. Then what do we need? 